The Hunt for the Seventh by David, Jude, and Riley. The story begins with the child's mom getting hit by a car. Ah! <laughs> for this reason, the dad gets depressed and loses his job. <laughs> You're fired! In search of a place to live, the dad and his two children move to Minerva Hall. With free food, a place to live, and a job, Minerva Hall didn't seem like a bad deal. Until the dad's son, Jim, starts to see ghosts. Jim arrives at the maids, where he's searching for his dad and sees a ghost that says hi to him. And with that, the ghosts start to leave Jim clues. Jim goes to the old chapel, where he finds the first clue. He sees how the child dies by a wind reader coming loose and falling onto her head. Ah. And with that, he finds the next grave, which has a bear block on it. A bear block, it must mean the bear pits. He goes to the bear pits, and he sees the next kid get speared through the heart when he trips. When he gets to the grave, there's a willow crown on it. That must mean the willow gardens. When he gets there, the next kid falls off the building by skipping backwards and not paying attention to where she is. He finds a snow globe by the grave. It must lead to the ice house. The next kid at the ice house apparently gets locked in and freezes to death. When he finds the hourglass, he realizes it must mean the old clock tower. The next kid has a seizure when he hears the loud bell ring inside the clock tower. When he sees the toy boat by the grave, he realizes that it means the lake where Beatrice Minerva drowned. He gets to the lake, and the ghosts drag him down to the bottom where he sees the seven stones and the dead Einstein, the seventh child. He, real he realizes that L Lord Minerva, Henry's dad, is the one that killed him by drowning him because he didn't think he was a good child. And yet, when he finds the proof, Lord Minerva goes to jail. Jim then drains the lake and saves this town of seven stones. Thank you, Jim, all the ghosts say. The end.